Hey Bartram, this is Miss Patterson, and I am going to talk to you about a lot of things today, a lot of really great information that you're going to need to know to start your high school career with. The first thing is how to get in touch with your school counselor. So the ninth and 10th grade school counselors are located in the ninth grade building behind Miss Hastings desk. We also have an open door policy during your lunch. So anytime that you want to stop by and ask a question, you can absolutely do that during your lunch. So please do that. We encourage you to do that. We specifically stay in our offices just so that we can be available to students during your lunch. The Bartram website and the Schoology group are both really, really good sources of information for you. If you go to the main page of the Bartram website, then go to guidance, it's going to give you a ton of information. You should also be in the School Counseling for BTHS student group for Schoology. Um, we also update that page daily with all kinds of things that you might need to know. And then also, especially for our distance learners, the daily announcements that are done here at Bartram during first period, those are actually posted daily to the main page of the Bartram website. Another thing that's posted daily to or periodically to the main page of the Bartram website is the emails that your parents get sent. So if there's a an email that's important that your parents got sent, you can also look at it on the main page of the Bartram website as well. The NACAT College Fair and BTHS College visits are open to you, and we encourage you to participate in these things. During the ninth grade year is the time that you need to start thinking about what your post-secondary options are going to be and kind of explore all of those options. A really great way to do that is by attending the National College Fair. They are online this year, but you can go ahead and, and um, sign up for that, register online, and attend. Um, you don't have to stay from 12 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can come and go as you please. Um, the other great thing that we have at Bartram is college visits that you can attend to. Um, this year, they are virtual. You can go to our website, so go to Bartram, then Guidance, and then College Visits to see all of the different schools that are going to be holding virtual visits for our students. And then all of those virtual visits will also be announced via our BTHS for School Counseling um, Schoology page as well. The next thing that we're going to go over is requirements for a 24 credit standard diploma. I want you to think about your um, getting your diploma like you need to get 28 check marks for graduation. And so you have to get all of the 28 check marks for graduation. Otherwise, you don't get to graduate. So you could be missing just a little teeny teeny one check mark or a half of a check mark and you don't get to graduate. So you have to really focus on getting every single thing that you need for graduation. The first two check marks that we're going to talk about are assessments. So there are two assessments that are tied to graduation in the state of Florida. Those two assessments are the Algebra 1 EOC and the 10th grade FSA ELA. In order to graduate, you have to pass both of those tests or earn a concordance score. For instance, with the Algebra 1 EOC, if you don't take that test or you don't pass that test, there are still other ways that you can get that check mark for graduation. So you can get it through the ACT math, SAT math, PSAT, NMSQT math, or the FSA geometry EOC. So as long as you pass one of those or earn the score that you need from one of those tests, you'll get the check mark for graduation. With the grade 10 FSA ELA, you either need to pass that FSA or ACT reading and English or SAT evidence-based reading and writing. So again, those are three different opportunities to get that check mark for graduation. 
if you get all the way to senior year and you have earned your credits for graduation and you have earned your GPA for graduation, but you're missing one of these check marks for the assessment, unfortunately, that means that you don't graduate with a standard high school diploma. You earn what's called a certificate of completion. And that means that your options are very, 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 very limited for your post-secondary plans. The next two check marks that we're going to talk about for graduation is the GPA and online credit. You need a 2.0 cumulative unweighted GPA to graduate from high school. That's about a C average. So we encourage students that to check hack regularly at least once a week to keep track of your grades. The other check mark that you need is one full length online course. Now, if you are currently taking HOPE at Bartram, then your check mark for this is going to be taken care of through that HOPE course because our HOPE course here is a blended virtual class. If you are taking HOPE for um, graduation, maybe through FLVS or St. John's Virtual School, as soon as you complete the entire course, semester one and two, then you'll get your check mark for graduation for your online course. For those of you maybe in ROTC who you don't have to take HOPE because you'll get a waiver for that, that means that you do need to take one full length online course before high school graduation. We suggest that you get that done at least by sophomore year, so you don't have to go into junior or senior year worrying about an extra online course that you have to do. And this doesn't have to be a hard online course either. It could be something super easy like driver's ed. Then the bulk of the check marks that you need for graduation are these 24 very specific credits that you need. You need English 1, 2, 3, 4. You need Algebra, Geometry, and two additional math courses. Those two additional math courses can be anything that we offer here at Bartram. You need Biology and two additional science courses. Again, the two additional science courses can be anything that we offer here at Bartram. You're going to need World History in the 10th grade, U.S. History in the 11th grade, and Government and Economics senior year. You need one credit of a practical performing or fine art. You need one hope credit, and then you're gonna need eight elective credits. Now, world language is not a graduation requirement. World language is a requirement for both Bright Future scholarships and most colleges and universities. So in order to go to college, or to get that Bright Future Scholarship, you're going to need to have two credits in the same consecutive world language. Now we're going to move on to promotion requirements. Um, you're just going to need five credits to promote to 10th grade. Obviously, you're going to want to try to get all seven credits so that you can be on track for graduation, though. Okay, community service. You don't need community service for graduation. There is no community service requirement tied to graduation, but you definitely need community service for money for college, scholarships, including Bright Futures. And then community service also looks really great on a college application. Community service verification letters can be turned into Ms. Richards in the main guidance office, or for our distance learners, they can be emailed. We suggest that students earn 100 hours of community service by the end of 11th grade year. The reason that we say 100 hours is because that is what Bright Futures requires for the highest level award. And we say by the end of 11th grade year so that you have that done and over with and it's not something that you have to worry about 12th grade year because there's a lot of other things that you're going to be dealing with 12th grade year. You can find community service opportunities on our website. So if you go to the Bartram main page, then click on guidance, then find community service, you'll be able to find those community service opportunities there. And then we also suggest that you keep a copy of community service verification letters just in case, you know, things happen. There are almost three or over 3,000 of you guys, and there's only one person putting in all of that community service information. 
so things happen sometimes, so we suggest that you keep a copy of that for your records. Also, make sure that you are doing community service for, with a nonprofit organization. That is very, very, very important. What do you need to know about GPAs? So some of you may already have GPAs if you took a high school credit in middle school. Some of you don't have a GPA yet. Everybody's GPA is going to update after semester one grades post. So this is how that works. You have quarter one, which we're in now, quarter two, and a midterm that's going to average together, and that's going to become your semester one final grade. That semester one final grade is going to post to your high school transcript, and that is going to going to be what determines your GPA. Then you'll be in quarter three, quarter four, and you'll have final exams. That is what's going to determine your semester two final grade. Semester two final grade will then post on your transcript and your updated and your GPA will be updated again at that point. So your GPA is only updated two times a year and that's it. If you take AP classes, dual enrollment classes, or honors classes, those classes are going to count towards your weighted GPA. However, the only thing that we look at as school counselors for graduation is your unweighted GPA. The only thing that we look at for qualifications for dual enrollment classes is your unweighted GPA, and that's it. This is a really simple way to calculate your unweighted GPA. Every grade is a point value. So A is four points, B is three points, C is two points, D is one point. You're going to assign all of your final grades a point value, add them up, divide them by seven, because you have seven classes, and then that's your unweighted GPA. So I encourage you to go home tonight, look at your hack, look at your current class grades, and then figure out, are you happy with, with your GPA if the grades were finalized right now? Or maybe do you want to, or maybe you just want to a little bit. Next, what do colleges look for in a student? So it's not just about GPA. About all kinds of things. They're looking for well-rounded students. They're looking for test scores from ACT and SAT. They're looking at community service hours. And when they're looking at community service hours, they are definitely looking at quality more so than quantity. They are also looking at the types of courses that you've taken throughout your high school career. And they're looking again at extracurricular and leadership activities. We've also uploaded, uploaded a packet of materials for you. If you go to our Schoology page, School Counseling for BTHS Students, then Resources, then Classroom Lessons, then Ninth Grade Lessons, you'll find a Ninth Grade Fall Packet for Students. It is a really large packet with all kinds of information. The first thing is post-secondary ready milestones. This just gives you a year-by-year -year guide of what you need to do to get ready for whatever that post-secondary option is for you. There's some information about that virtual college fair, specifically the colleges that are going to be in attendance and how to register for it and how to do it online. There's some information about the official SAT, PSAT practice. Um, this is especially important for any of the ninth graders that signed up to take the PSAT in October, um, especially if you signed up so that you could use that as a concordance score for the Algebra 1 EOC. There's some information about dual enrollment in there as well, not because you need to be doing anything right now with dual enrollment other than making sure you have a 3.0 unweighted cumulative GPA, but because sometimes we get a lot of questions about dual enrollment and then we just putting that out there for you. But again, there's nothing that you need to do freshman year about dual enrollment except to keep up with your GPA to make sure that you have that 3.0 unweighted cumulative GPA. And then there's also a document in there about where can your scores take you. This is just a document outlining what you can use ACT-SAT for. 
If you have any questions, please come see your school counselors during your lunch. We are specifically in our offices and we clear our schedules just so that we can make sure that we're available to students if they have any questions during lunch. So please feel free to stop by and we look forward to seeing you. Thank you.